Well, now, Brian, I guess it's time for the final part of this thing. The last part. Or to quote my friend Keith Mitchell, the match we've all been waiting for, the last one. So we talked about it uh, earlier, but let's just recap. The main event for the world title in AEW, scheduled to be MJF defending against Jay White. MJF injured earlier in the night, taken to the hospital, bad leg. Adam Cole has said, it's okay. Tony said it was all right. I'll defend the title for him. So we have got the situation where Adam Cole was injured while he and MJF were the tag team champions. MJF is allowed to defend the titles by himself, and he had just picked another partner to defend the title, uh, or to defend the title with but at least he still had it. But now, in the past, when the champion got hurt, there was no forfeit. There was a contender's match for the interim title in AEW, but now they're saying MJF has to forfeit the AEW title because he's hurt and not medically cleared to wrestle. But Adam Cole, who is not only not medically cleared to wrestle to defend the tag team title he already has, but has also just had surgery and is on crutches and in a cast, is okayed to defend the heavyweight championship that he has never held in the first place in place of the champion who's hurt. Did I do that right? Just about, yeah. Okay. So, Adam Cole, they do entrances. They do in-ring introductions like it's a real match. Adam is obviously... This is not like the old Dusty or even Cody Rhodes. Oh, he's got a broken forearm. He's going to put a cast on it and fight through the pain. It's a motherfucker that cannot step on one foot. He's literally on crutches and a one-legged man. And as we mentioned before, he looks 50 years old with his straggly top-knotted hair and the beard. And, and they were taken forever with this thing like it was going to happen. And people are sitting there like, okay, you know... We expected something else besides this. And then the ambulance pulls into the back of the arena. And MJF is driving it. And he pulls to a stop and finally figures out how to open the door from the inside. I'm not sure what was going on there. And got out with one leg wrapped up and limped into the arena where his music played and he's limping into the arena with the security and the referees trying to stop him and falling because he can't stand on this leg. But he gets in the ring and de demands to be able to, and suddenly he's cleared again. And I'm, I'm not even sure, even in the preposterous days of the Attitude Era, did they go so far as to say, well, Austin's been taken to the hospital and he's not cleared to wrestle tonight, and then they let him come back in and actually have a 30-minute match, or did he just come back and stunner a few people? That may be a rhetorical question. Yeah, I, I mean, you know what the answer is to that one. But anyway, so he MJF throws a punch at Jay White and falls down, and Jay White takes over on his leg. And I'm thinking, okay, you know, I, I even understand what they're trying to do but how long can they do this, right? And the guns are at ringside, and they're getting heat on MJF behind the referee's back, and they do it again twice, and then finally the third time, he catches them, the referee does, and he kicks them out, and the gun boy's getting kicked out, got some response from the people. But then it was... <sighs> I'd, I, if they had to do this, this whole thing, then, Brian, don't you think, because MJF did put the psychological spots that he puts in that he knows the people want to see, that will, they will get with it no matter what else is going on. But there was so much time in between each. And we were expected to believe that this debilitating injury that he had suffered it, it was still hampering him throughout this whole thing, but they went 30 minutes bell to bell. And it would be Jay White would get heat on the leg and then MJF would throw the thing in that would get the people, like the kangaroo kick and the nip up, but then he sells the leg. And Jay White stops him again. And more heat. And then 
MJF takes him out on the floor and he's selling the leg the whole time in, in some degree, but he puts Jay White on the desk for a big spot and the fucking desk, the announced desk, collapses into pieces under Jay White's weight before they've done anything. So MJF just puts him on top of the fucking pieces and White has to lay there for 25 seconds and MJF still goes to the top and drops an elbow off the top onto the flat floor with he landed great for him for jay white's sake but not so much for his own sake why do that if it, you he shouldn't be risking again his career for something that nobody's going to remember a hundred thousand people are going to buy this or whatever the fuck good god and a lot of people have tweeted at me because I've, you know, commented at Dax's face. Well, you jumped off a scaffold on the biggest show of all time in a bump that we're still talking about after 40 fucking years. And I was a manager who didn't need to be doing drop kicks and leapfrogs, right? I don't know what the, and this was way more dangerous than it. Well, the problem too, I mean, he's going to kill his hip. But yes. once, the, once the table went down, I know you, you know, you probably have a spot in mind, as the gardener does right behind me right now. You probably the have chainsaw. a chainsaw. Well, he doesn't have a chainsaw right now. He's driving around on some kind of blowing machine. Uh, I used to know a girl <laughs> like that. No, uh, but what MJF? Um, I don't remember what I was saying now. Fuck. I'll say, I'll, I, you were remembering the blowing machine. The point is, he's killing his hip. But if you got a spot like that in mind, and something goes awry, modify. That's what I was trying to say before the blowing machine. Yes. And then at one point, Jay White gave MJF a rock bottom off the top rope right on MJF's left shoulder. And he would fire back and then White would stop him again. And then MJF hit a tombstone and sold his leg again. Both were selling, but it's 20 minutes in. If you had taken this 30-minute match and put MJF's little teasers that really got the people into a 15 minute match. You may have had something. That's what I was trying to say earlier, but it just, it went on. And what MJF runs and jumps over the top rope and gives Jay white a cutter to the floor. What a move. I've never it seen anything on, like that before ever. Never have either. It ought to be on television in an angle. But in, and it's not something that a one-legged man should do. He ran across the goddamn ring, jumped over the top rope like the Fosbury flop. And, and then why was MJF continuing to hit and slap his bad leg? Well, sometimes I've, when sometimes when you I've done that before with uh what? with my leg and different parts of the body. If they hurt like my shoulder, I'll punch my shoulder a little bit. What? He was punching his fucking hey, I've had a goddamn couple of bad legs, and I never felt like punching them to add to it. A little massage, maybe a squeeze, but punching it? Well, I mean, again, it's punching it in the massaging sense, not to hurt yeah. yourself. There's only there's only one part of my lower body that I want to beat on a regular occasion. Have you met so the blowing then, machine? And yeah, well, yeah, there you go. She used to live around here. And he works on the on MJF's leg more and gets the figure four so Cole can tease throwing the towel in. But then MJF with a bad leg that he's been taking the hospital for and couldn't stand on at the start of the match turns the figure four. And I mean, these, these things were good, but if we've just, it's been so preposterous the way they got here. And then Adam Cole has the title belt and he th thinks about hitting Jay White with it, but Jay White grabs it while he's thinking and hits MJF with it and gets a two count. And then MJF kicks Jay White into the referee and Cole puts the ring on the mat and tells MJF to come and get it. But Jay White gets it. Didn't we just see this goddamn finish? Over across the street in the WWE, he put the knucks on the apron. The wrong guy got him. And this, he couldn't throw the ring to, hey, buddy, catch. He's like, here, come get it with one fucking leg. What do you want me to do? I'm on crutches. And Jay White gets the fucking ring. 
But MJF hits Jay White, guess where? In the fucking nuts. And gets the ring and the guns come in because the referee's still down. And he nails both the guns and then nails Jay White and covers him one, two, three. 30 minutes with one leg. What'd you think? I think you picked a hell of a time to ask me to get on the mic. The guy's right outside my window. What did I think? You're driving down the road right now in your, in your hot rod, trying to get away from that question. I'm trying to think of the blowing machine. Listen, you know, after the show was over, I heard from several people who had the exact same word that they used to describe the event. And I think it was the event, but it could have been just the main event or everything leading up to it. Gardner is the word. The God. word was overbooked. Yes. And again, you could say it about a lot of things on this show, but maybe best said about the main event. And I thought MJF did a great, I mean, everything he did was great. That fucking cut her over the rope. Yeah. Was insane. I mean, it's, I've never seen the luchadors do that shit. I know one, but it also went like a half hour. And I also think it was the wrong opponent to try to do this stuff with. And I'm not saying that Jay White isn't talented in the ring. But if you're going to do all this shit with MJF, it should be a strong heel. It shouldn't be just one of the heels you're trying to get. They're trying to use this to get Jay White over more as opposed to Jay White being a really over heel feuding with the world champion. Yes. And they also haven't realized that at this point, they ought to just see what they could do to get Jay White to get MJF over more for somebody he might draw money with. But they haven't figured that out either. And and I... If, let me say this this way. Every, I'll finish your sentence earlier. Everything MJF did was great, but much of it was out of place in this context and situation. What about that? I think that's a really good way of putting it. And again, some of the elements were almost dynamite-esque in terms of like doing the ambulance angle and him coming back. Couldn't open the door, but he figured out how to get the sirens on. I feel like I wouldn't know how to do that. <laughs> That'd be the first thing I would try to do, and I would mess that up. That's very, like, Monday Night War-esque. And then it was the 30-minute match. You know, so many of these matches, when you think about it, look great in highlight form. But when you're watching it, it's a 30-minute fucking match. And again, yeah. I hate to say it, but it was two matches after that swerve match. Was that a half hour? That went a it while. Had to be. Had to be. Yeah, I mean, that went a long time, too. So, I, mean, I can't say too much else. I mean, I'm glad MJF kept the belt. They didn't really do anything with the devil character thing here. No fake rooms or windows here. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I also think AEW did a good job of making everyone forget about Kota Ibushi on a bicycle. With this that's uh, my god that's true that was just like four <laughs> or five days ago the most embarrassing thing ever seen on wrestling television and they've managed to top it several times since then well there you go and there it was and there we are and where are you